expression and exertion of democracy. And so there are a number of principles behind this that I want to just let you know about tonight. The first one, the principle of democracy, has to be the ground up. That you listen to what people say, they have a real voice in it, they have their opinions and ideas going forward. I tell you this, how you develop an economic strategy could be done by economists, yes, and there are good economists around who give you some very good ideas. There are also people who work in factories, in call centres, in local authorities, in many other places, who also have ideas and are frustrated that nobody's listening to them. breaking open this sort of magic circle of um, Westminster, some of our great universities, Whitehall and the boardrooms who try to control thinking, control ideas and control the way policy is developed. None of this is easy, but surely the principle has to be, in a real democracy, it's not just about voting every four or five years. It's not just about electing people to public office. Yeah. It's holding them to account when they are in public office, but having your say at all other times on what policies are going to go forward to be developed. Because when decisions are made from the top down, and you read the history of the struggles that cabinet ministers and Labour governments have been through in the past, they're often hemmed in by this magic circle of decision-making that prevents ordinary people's views being taken on board, ordinary people absolutely ignored. Decisions taken top-down end up working for the, often for the benefit of the privileged few, not the many. Perhaps we could turn that thing around. We need to have decision-making made for the millions and not the millionaires. That surely would be the right way of doing it. So, it is about trusting the wisdom of ordinary people to do things differently and do things in a much better way. And so, we have to have a more devolved democracy within our society. That devolution has to be, yes, to strong local authorities, yes, to regions and nations, Yes, also to citizens' assemblies. But there is a cheap word in all this which has to be challenged, and that is devolved power and all is well. National wealth is not shared equally across regions any more than it's shared equally between people. There has to be a very important and very tough role for central government in ensuring the fair distribution of resources including with the devolution packages. Otherwise, we we'll end up passing services and responsibilities on to somebody else without the resources to deliver them and passing on the cuts that don't look as though they're being made by central government, but in reality are. Look, look at this local authority in Brent, look at every other authority in London, look at them across the country. I've often said this in many places. You could take a map of the poor of Britain and put a red blob over each area of great inequality and great poverty. You could then take a second map of the areas of greatest cuts in central government support to the every part of this country and say use blue for the greatest cuts. I tell you what, the blue would obliterate the red. It's the poorest who are paying the price of austerity in the cuts that have been made.